Hello there, I'm Black Bright and I am broadcasting out of the UK. I'm feeling a bit more relaxed after a good night's sleep and I'm raring to go now. So for those of you who have been subscribing, hello and welcome back, or I should say welcome me back. And to anyone visiting for the first time, yeah, um, please subscribe if you like the video, like or share. Um, today's video is um, based on um, whether or not discrimination takes place at the airport, um, especially racial discrimination. I've done a video in the past and um, there was one that said, you know, the border guards will take away your passport if you're Jamaican or if you're Caribbean or African, a couple of guys had their passports revoked or confiscated. I'm not quite sure the background against it. Um, watching Border Force um, Customs on TV, um, there was a lot of black people being stopped and I felt as though um, black people were being discriminated against. So I did a video about it and then, you know, since I have now gone through the process myself um, I'm not quite sure how it takes place I'm not quite sure whether it's who's on, on duty I'm not quite sure whether um, it's whether or not someone's had a bad day I don't know if it's because of what you look like whether or not you're behaving suspiciously whether or not they've detected any illegal substances in suitcases I'm not quite sure what happens and why it happens when um, young men like those two men that were, were detained and their passports, um, apparently the border force said, you know, you're not entitled to this British passport. And there was a lot of going on. And, you know, we've seen videos where they have talked about um, Jamaicans having their British passports confiscated. Like I said, I don't know the ins and outs of it but my partner is Jamaican and I wanted to tell you about our experience going through the airport so um, got to the airport you know they allow us two hours and um, I was wondering what would happen when we go through the process I didn't really want to go through the e-gates I thought we had an option of going to the desk to check in, but you don't have that option. Everybody has to go through that e-gate procedure. You put your passport face down on in the direction it tells you, and you wait until you look straight into this camera, you wait until the light goes green, the door opens and you go through. I went through. Um, my partner behind came in afterwards. Um, he had to be pulled aside because he had a necklace or a belt or something that jingled. But apart from that, it was smooth as anything. So we went through and I was thinking, OK, we've got through this end. What's it going to be like coming back? Anyway, um, everything was fine. You know, they had that Thomas Cook drama before we left and people were being stranded. But Tui, honestly, that was a brilliant flight. And you know what I like about it? It's so user friendly. It's not like the boring British, well, I shouldn't say any names, but it's not like the boring air, other airlines. They actually make it quite a magical experience, especially for children. And because I'm quite childlike at heart, I enjoyed all the bubbles and taking us into this fantasy land. So I quite enjoyed um, the TUI experience. Anyway, got there. I'm not going to go through the whole palaver of being in Jamaica, but coming back, I thought, OK, here we go. So we bought extra bottles of rum. I bought an extra litre. Uh, my partner bought a couple of extra litres and um, we decided that we'd go and declare them because we didn't want to be pulled up and then told that we couldn't have them and they'd be seized and blah, blah, blah. And we hadn't bought them at duty free. We'd actually bought them from the stores which are not compromised in any way so when you buy them duty free they're a bit well my my feeling is that they're compromised the ones that you get from the stores you know on the streets and you know in those little corner shops or whatever you call them 
those are not compromised. You get the real deal. So I'd come in with a couple of bottles and we decided to declare that we'd come in with rum. To be honest, I wish I'd just bought one bottle because it cost me an extra 25 quid on, for that extra bottle. My partner had to pay an extra 50 quid for his two bottles. So um, it's not really worth taking the extra because, you know, for a couple of, you know, for a compromised bottle of rum or whatever it is. I mean, OK, so I got a deal. I think it worked out to $19 in New York. Not in New York. What am I talking about? In um, where were we when we bought it? <clears throat> not sure if it was downtown Montego Bay but anyway we bought it at one of these stores I bought one in a place called um, Waterworks in Westmoreland and um, my partner bought his in Sav Lamar so Savannah Lamar so um, but then when you think about it it wasn't worth it because with that extra 25 quid I pay I could have actually bought another bottle you know, here in the UK, because they're 26 quid in the UK. So I might as well have just done that. So next time it's a learning experience. It's not really worth going through customs with extra bottles of rum. It's, and especially if you're going to declare it or if they find it, they seize it and they still charge you. So coming back, we thought we'd play it safe, not do anything illegal to see what happens because I still had it in my head that, you know, we were going to be stopped. For, I had dark glasses because I've got these subscription classes and I thought, well, maybe I look a bit suspicious. And then my old man went into the loo and then I thought, oh, he's taking a bit long. They might think he's doing something in there because I know they've got all the cameras all around the airport. So I started thinking, oh, well, that's going to look suspicious. They're going to stop us because of that. And then I thought, oh, I better not go into the loo too long just in case. I mean, I, was, I wasn't really paranoid, but all these thoughts were going on in my head about what the, the reasons why uh, somebody might look suspicious or somebody might they might detain somebody or stop them or whatever it was so I wanted to minimize any suspicion um I couldn't put my contact lenses in because um they were in the bottom of my bag and then I thought oh to go and dig them out blah 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 so I kept on my dark sus subscription glasses on and I went through the um the motion of going through the e-gates again coming in looking into the camera it let me through I'm like oh that was good enough my old man went through good enough straightforward we went over to the red one which said um declare items we went through and the guy looked at us as though we were crazy for declaring the items but you know he charged us anyway um so yeah and we just walked through so there was no hitch at all none whatsoever so like i said i do not know the reasons why people get stopped I like I don't know if it's because they've had a bad day. I don't know if it's because a particular uh, border force or customs control people are racist in that particular scenario. I don't know if the people who got stopped had criminal records. I don't know if they look suspicious or were behaving suspiciously. I really do not know why people get stopped or why individuals have their passports confiscated. All I can tell you is about my personal experience through the airport which was very straightforward um the line does take a bit long because it's a new system for many people and sometimes if you're not standing in the right position um it won't open the gate for you and so a lot of people were standing there looking into midair looking kind of gormless and then they decided that it wasn't working then they'd call one of the guys and then they'd take them off somewhere else so that kind of held up the process if people didn't put their feet, they've got these feet on the floor, you know, an outline of your feet. And you're supposed to stand at that position. And when you stand on that position, it kind of puts you at an angle. And then, but it's important that you stand in that position, even though you're not standing straight. And then you look at the camera, the camera kind of... Um, factors in the picture that's on the screen and the picture in the in the passport even though I don't know nothing like my passport picture and somehow it kind of marries the two opens the gate and you walk through and it was as simple as that when I was going through there wasn't even that many bags being searched 
So I don't know if they've got even more sophisticated. They, as we went through, there was a suitcase in the customs um, declaring, there was a suitcase opened, but I didn't see the owner of the suitcase. And when we went through, um, you know, to the exit, the airport, I didn't see anybody, you know, of any consequence um, having their bag searched. So I don't know. I mean, we're coming from Jamaica, the place where marijuana is, you know, um, rampant or whatever you call it, in abundance. And yet, you know, I didn't see anybody being held up. I don't know if it's behind closed doors. I don't know if it's because um, we were right at the back of the queue by the time, you know, we came downstairs. So we were like the stragglers. So I don't know if a lot of people have been stopped and gone through. I don't know what happened. But all I know is that it was a very straightforward experience. And I just wanted to share that with you just in case um, there's some of you who are um, worried about leaving the country. Like I said, as long as you're legit and your passport is valid and, you know, what can I say? Everyone to their own. Everyone has a different experience. Somebody else might have had a different experience. But if you had a different experience other than my experience and the experience of my Jamaican partner, then please let me know. And I'd love to hear your comments. And that's all for now. Bye bye.